Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, as you can see, I'm in my kitchen and it has been repurposed as a garage for the RD125LC, which I'm busy, well, over the last few weeks, I think it's a good round about three or four weeks now, I have been working on it. Um, it's not really that much of an issue bringing her into the kitchen because she lives here anyway, um, where the dog has now decided to take up its roosting point. Um, so I've just pushed it out here, put my towel down, and just doing a bit of work on it. Now, as you know from the last video, I have totally rebuilt the engine. Um, done all the bearings, I've done all the seals, I've basically done everything. I've even got a new bore for it, um, which is at its standard bore. So basically everything has been done. I've even had the the actual bottom end realigned and basically all done and um, seen if there was any run out on it, which there's not now. There was quite a bit before, but now there's not. Um, now the reason why I did this, there was a few issues which had been, don't get me wrong, the bike was running, it was running quite well, however there was a few little issues, one it wouldn't idle properly, um, you'd normally find after you've been riding it, it would sit at around about 2000 RPM constantly, when you went to uh, drop the RPM down using the tick over screw, you would just dramatically drop off and you couldn't actually get any kind of stable tick over, which is a classic air leak problem which two strokes are prone for because there's that many places you can get air leaks on them and um, the second one was I was losing coolant um, if you went on long rides you'd find your radiator would empty around about a quarter and your expansion bottle would be empty and um, so that was one issue which I thought okay that can be head gasket or water pump seal so I might as well do them the other one was me oil which um, this is actually new oil which has been in the bike less than I would say 15 minutes was going black now, initially I thought it might be a bit of a emulsiation, so water or cooling getting into the oil through that seal where the water pump is behind there, or combustion gases coming in from the crank case through the crank seal. Now, I know it's not them two now because I've changed the crank seal, I've changed the crank spacer, which is up here, um, just to show you what condition this was in. This is the crank spacer which actually the, the seal sits on and as you can see it's quite heavily worn by the seal. This is just years and years of abuse and at some point it's been swapped around because there's two wear points on it. I did put this back in the bike and then thought right that could be where my air leak is because I put it back together I've still got the same issues which I'm going to go through in a second and I've got a new one put that one back in but I've um, still got the same issue. Ooh, go on focus, focus, there we go. Um, so yeah I think the black oil though, because I know I'm not burning any, if you burn um, gearbox oil through a two stroke you kind of know you'll, you'll get very rich mixture, um, it'll smell different because gearbox oil or just normal engine oil does smell different than two stroke and basically I know all that's sealed and I'm not losing any oil anyway. Um, so I think that's actually the clutch plates are causing that problem. Um, not an issue because the clutch is still biting and all that, um, but I'll change them at a later date when I get around to it. However, moving on to my next problem, Spock, shut up. Good boy. Right. So, put the engine back together, done that, took it out the other day, still had the same idling problem. Now, I am racking my brains of where it is because. In a two-stroke, you've got a lot more kind of leak points, as I said before, than a four-stroke because we're actually using the crankcase itself as a sealed chamber for the mixture to go in. So if we get any leak by there, you're going to get a leaner mixture. Now, this bit here, as in the whole intake tract, I know fine well is sealed. That's that's just, I've, I've sealed up good and proper. And um, the only other thing it could be is there, there's an O-ring in there, but I don't think it is that. Um, checked all this tubing up here to the boost bottle, which has got a very fancy name in Yamaha, but I can't remember what it is. Um, so the only place I could think there was an air leak getting into the crankcase was around this side. Now, I had already changed this seal at the stator side. However, when I went to put the new seal back in, um, I couldn't get a socket over the end of the crank. So I couldn't actually get an even like distribution of pressure pushing it in. So I thought, right, I'll use a big Allen key head off my screwdriver. And the first time I went to push it in, it literally went all the way in. Um, just say shy of the, the actual um, bearing. And I thought, oh, 
bugger. Well, to be honest, I thought uh, I'm not going to lose out. I'll just push the rest of it into the same degree. Um, one thing I didn't take into account though was this oil wear here, um, which basically um, goes into the crankcase when the piston comes down and forces the oil, some of the oil um, fuel mixture th back through the bearing, which basically lubricates the bearing. Um, however, that sits more proud than the rest of the sealing surface around here. So what I think was because it was pressed a bit further in, there was more, there was a shorter leak path at this point, and there was air coming through here. The seal wasn't also square; it was slightly off cock, which is, to be honest, it, it's gonna leak. I think sometime sooner rather than later, just because you've got there's going to be a bit of stress on that seal, which it shouldn't have been putting up with. Um, so what I think's happened is, originally it was leaking through this seal. I've obviously took that out, put a new seal in, and not fitted it right, and it's doing the same blooming thing again. Um, the ish, the other issue I thought with pushing the seal a bit too far in was obviously there wasn't going to be a, as much lubrication going between the bearing and the crankcase because obviously this um, hole here was restricted. However, I've, I've taken a good look at the, the bearing there and the bearing seems alright so I, I think I've got away with it there. So I'm waiting for a new seal to come here to push push in and hopefully, hopefully that will be the issue. If it's not, I'm going to be sitting here crying on the floor because th this thing is really doing my nutting. But that's the joy of two strokes. They're a lot simpler to work on, however they're a lot more fin finicky to work on. Because the slightest air leak anywhere and they just misbehave to no end. Um, the water um, problem or the cooling problem I'm hoping is the radiator cap. Um, because I pressure tested the other day after it drunk all of its cooling to get, well not all of it, but a lot of it out of the expansion bomb. And I found out there was a lot of air escaping through this radiator cap. Oof, just take it off here. Which, to be honest, is not in great nick. Um, it's, there's cracks in the seal and everything, so there is, this system is not getting pressurised. So what I think's happening is, when the system pressurises and obviously the liquid expands some of it's getting by this seal and leaking out and when it cools back down instead of actually taking um, fluid from the expansion bottle it's actually taking it out through the atmosphere which is then basically exchanging the fluid in the radiator for just plain old air however that still doesn't explain why the um, expansion bottle was emptying so quick well just emptying in general which you normally find if it's spitting coolant out of the ex out of the overflow tube, it's a head gasket problem because the combustion is getting past the sealing surface here and actually pressurising the system again, which is the only way it's got to go is through the expansion bottle, which then forces the coolant out through the expansion bottle overflow. However, I'm just going to for five apart. I'm going to get that because I think I've fallen into my own trap here of always look at the simplest things first, which I haven't. I've basically just torn down the engine, put piles of new bits on, got back and found the same problem yet again. <laughs> which, to be honest, I'm kicking myself for now because the first thing I said to everybody is look at the simple things first before you do anything dramatic. And it looks like that is a problem. And for a £5 part, which I can just take off and put back on, which I've got on order, I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place, but hey ho, I've done it now, the engine has been fully done up, so to be honest, it's no skin off my nose, I've just know, once I find the rest of the problems, I've got trouble free riding for me and the missus in the near future, because it's basically a brand new engine now. Uh, so yeah, that, that's where I am with the RD. It's frustrating, but I'm getting there, and I, I can't, I can't say I'm complaining because I do like tinkering with bikes, and even though I am complaining about these problems, I like the problem solving aspect of trying to... F this is one of the reasons why I like working on bikes and I'm in the job I do anyway, is I like this kind of problem solving kind of part of it. I, you get a problem, somebody comes by, it's doing this, this, this and this, and then you spend a day just going around and around and around in your head about what's going on. And you normally find, I don't know, around about 50% of the time, it's something you wouldn't have ever thought of, and it's something that you sit there 
and the initial thought is it can't be that but the more you think into it the more you start rationalizing that wait there it actually could be the big part of the problem you change it and it actually is so I'm hoping that's what this spike's going to be I'm going to change that seal I'm going to change this radiator cap and everything's going to be good if it's not I am going to sit in the corner and cry in the fetal position but we'll get to there when we get to there so that's the update on the RD um, as always keep safe um, ride safe I know that it's now autumn I know that comes a bit sour to my lips but it is autumn now I'm hoping there's going to be a fair few um, nice days so I can get out and obviously when I fix this we need to get this back out and on the road again and um, yeah keep safe keep watching because there's more videos coming and um, I shall see you soon. <laughs>